In this video I shall briefly describe removal of the pancreatic cancer from body of the pancreas an operation called distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy. Pancreatic cancer is the leading cause of cancer death worldwide. Only 1 in 10 patients will receive life-saving surgery. Patients may have symptoms for months. An investigation for diagnosis commonly includes scans such as ultrasound, CT, MRI scan, CT PET scan as well as an endoscopy such as endoscopic ultrasound. These types of tumors that typically occur in the body of the pancreas are diagnosed late. However, they do cause symptoms such as abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, weight loss and loss of appetite. Reviewing preoperative preparation and assessment. At the time of the diagnosis, the emphasis is on improving functional status. Hence, patient is provided with information. And this would include around nutrition, health, exercise, fitness, as well as given pancreatic enzyme supplementation. In the majority of the patients, the pancreas tube is obstructed and hence not enough enzymes get through to the small bowel to digest the food. Smoking cessation advice is given and patient is prepared for splenectomy, that is removal of the spleen. This includes vaccinating against some specific bacteria. The risk of these infections is quite high after splenectomy and patients ought to be protected. These vaccinations can also be given within a few weeks after the operation. Patients are assessed by the anesthetic team in the hospital. This will include blood tests, ECG, and heart and lung function assessments. It is important that patients choose hospital and centers that are experienced in treating pancreatic cancer to get the best outcomes. Patients are usually walked to the theater or the operating room. They will be introduced to the anesthetic team. They will have various cannulas inserted as well as a urinary catheter and and the operation will commence under general anesthetic. This operation traditionally has been performed through the open route, but, but these days it is increasingly performed by minimally invasive means such as laparoscopic or robotic. As soon as the surgeon gains access, the first step is to assess for metastatic disease, i.e. spread outside of the main tumor, as well as infiltration into the major blood vessels. Here's a picture that you've seen already. So this is the pancreas, which has a head, neck, body, and tail. We've drawn a tumor in the pancreas. The liver is over here with the bile tube coming out of it. The stomach overlies the pancreas, it's connected to the small bowel. The spleen is an organ that is important in immunity and is at the tail end of the pancreas and the tail overlies the spleen. This is the kidney not drawn to scale and on top of the kidney is the adrenal gland which is in close proximity to the pancreas. The yellow flecks of tissue that you see are lymph nodes and these run along the blood vessels and these are important in immunity and infection. They can also trap cancer cells. You can now see the dotted line outlining all of the tissue that needs to be removed. And this not only includes the body and tail of the pancreas, but also the adrenal gland and the spleen, as well as all of the lymph nodes to the left of these blood vessels. And why do we need such an extensive operation? And that is to be sure that we remove the tumor in its, in its entirety, as well as the draining lymph nodes, which may contain cancer cells. So this tissue, all of it comes out. The cut end of the pancreas contains a pancreatic tube and there's a danger of a leak of pancreatic juice from this tube. Hence surgeons take care in stapling this area as well as leaving a drain it lies in the bed of the pancreas close to the cut end of the pancreas and takes the fluid outside. And let's look at the organs that have been removed that includes the body and tail of the pancreas with the cancer, the suprarenal gland, tissue behind it, all of the lymph nodes and spleen. Removing all of this is important to ensure that the tissue, that the cancer is removed in its entirety. Over here, this is a depiction of the cancer and the tissue that has been removed all around it so that it does not actually impinge on any of its margin, thus ensure that the cancer has been total, totally removed. Once the operation finishes, the patients are woken up from the general anesthetic and the tube from the windpipe is removed. Patients are typically moved to the ward or an enhanced care facility. They may have several tubes in situ depending on the route through which the operation has been performed and pain relief is provided through one of several means. Increasingly, surgical units are providing enhanced care recovery options for the patients and the concept revolves around pain relief, preventing infection, encouraging early mobility and walking, preventing nausea and vomiting, encouraging gut motility. The central plank of all this also is early detection of complications and then taking the action to The try. typical hospital stays around four to eight days, but what are the risks and complications? The complications may be immediate, such as within a few days of the operation, bleeding, infection, that might be in intra-abdominal or surgical site, the leak from the pancreas as described previously, splenectomy related, i.e. an increased risk of infection. Rarely there can be injury to 
other structures within the abdomen, and finally a small risk of deep vein thrombosis, as well as complications related to the anesthetic or to the patient's comorbidity. Long term, patients are at slight risk of significant infection related to splenectomy, they have a risk of developing diabetes over time, and they would need pancreatic enzyme supplementation to replicate the function of the pancreas that has been lost. This would be lifelong to improve and maintain their nutritional status. Typically, at discharge, patients would be self-caring. They would not have a stoma or a bag. They can eat normally, starting with smaller, more regular meals. The bowel would be functioning. Pain should be under control. Generally, patients may not have any tubes. However, sometimes a tube is left behind to reduce the risk of complications from pancreatic leak. Antibiotics are prescribed as once a day to reduce the risk of serious post-splenectomy infection. If vaccination has not been previously commenced, then this is done so in the post-operative phase. Patients are provided with information and prescription for pancreatic enzyme supplementation, which would be lifelong. The removed material is assessed for whether the tumor has been completely removed as well as the size of the tumor and its characteristics. The removed lymph nodes are examined for the presence of cancer cells. Most patients would be candidate for adjuvant therapy that would include chemotherapy ideally started within eight weeks of the operation. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any comments please do share.